Acts chapter 2. It's going to be a lot of word today. Because what I want you to see is there is a supernatural side of walking with the Lord. And I want you to understand you cannot walk with God in the natural and think that you're going to accomplish things in the supernatural and think that you're going to battle the supernatural in the name of Jesus in the natural. There, there is a supernatural side. Now, the one thing we have to know, for those of you who who, who are on YouTube who, who may not have heard of this. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word is Jesus Christ. That's John chapter 1, verse 1. God is the Word. I mean, Jesus is the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And G that means Jesus is God. So, that shows the authority that he has. He came in the flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Now, that establishes who Jesus is, correct? Moving right along. Now we're going to talk about Acts chapter 2. What happened when Jesus died on the cross? Hmm. He nailed our sins to the cross. He paid the penalty of death that we should pay for all of our sins. And it's up to us to accept his forgiveness, his pardon. All right. But he rose from the dead. He's the only one, y'all. He rose from the dead. That's where our power comes in at. That's where the supernatural kicks in. Why? Because once the Lord had him ascend up into heaven, what happened? He deposited the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is what we need. He is who we need to walk. This walk of righteousness. Because the Holy Spirit changes our nature. We cannot change without the working of the Holy Ghost inside of us. So God in essence, stack the cards in our favor. And as he stacked the cards in our favor, the biggest thing he did for us was fill us with his Holy Spirit, equip us with the power of his Holy Spirit, and give us the keys of death and hell from Jesus Christ, who has all authority over everything. Now, let's go. I want to read... There's a verse where he says that. I want to establish his authority. I want to read from Matthew 28, verse 16. I'm going to be darting all around because I just want to establish the supernatural authority we have in Jesus. Matthew 28, verse 16 through 19. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, listen to this, all power, that does not mean some power. That doesn't mean with the exception of certain things, with the exception of the devil or demons or the powers of hell. No, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That establishes his authority over all y'all. That's why the Bible refers to him as King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Prince of Princes, he is the head honcho in this whole scheme of things, in all the universe, y'all. You hear me? Now, this is what I want you to see. Now we will go back to Acts chapter 2. This is when they were in the upper room. When Jesus was about to be, 
when he was about to be caught up in the heaven after his resurrection, after he met with the disciples and did all kind of stuff, raising the dead and everything, what he said to the disciples was, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you, I think Jerusalem, I'm not sure, but tarry ye, um, that means wait, be still, until you have been endued with power from on high. And that is the reason he had to leave. He had to go to heaven, leave our presence so that what he calls the comforter would come. The comforter is another name for the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell you, many of you will have a difficult time getting the victory over sin. Many of you will have a difficult time understanding how you can hear from God, recognizing God, and discerning the difference between Him and demonic forces talking to you. You need the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell you why you need the Holy Ghost. All right. So we'll start at verse 1. This is Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Let me stop right there, you guys. For those of you who are pro-vaccine or against the vaccines, for those of you who are amillennial, post-millennial, mid-millennial, amillennial, whatever you are, whatever differences of opinion you have, on certain parts of the Bible and certain doctrine. Your foundation has to be sure of who Jesus is, who God is, and who the Holy Ghost is in your life. And that God says, out of Jesus' words, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So, I want to share this with you. You need the Holy Ghost to do it all. Whatever God wants you to do, baby, you need the Holy Ghost, even to love the way God loves. Now, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all on one accord, which means unity. No matter what your difference of opinion is, unity is the key, baby. We are one in the spirit. And God does not like division. Verse 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let me tell you, some of y'all want to give yourself utterance. Some of y'all want to imitate folks in the church. But let me tell you, baby cakes, the Holy Ghost is the one that gives you the utterance. If he doesn't give you the utterance, don't sit up there and try to make fun and try to imitate somebody in the church. You don't know where their tongues is coming from. You wait on God to give you your tongues. You hear me? All right. Now, and the, the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 5. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak? Galileans, and how hear ye every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Now, I'm not I'm gonna stop there because I don't want to go into all of what people thought. Yeah, they thought they were drunk and you know they were straightened out as nine in the morning, you know how they're gonna be drunk. So the bottom line is what I want to share with you is there are indications of being filled with the Holy Ghost, there are gifts. Of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Tongues is one of them. Prophecy is another. You hear me? Preaching. Teaching. Exhortation. Working of miracles. Gifts of healing. Word of wisdom. Word of knowledge. All of the above. 
only comes through the Holy Ghost. Fruits of the Holy Spirit. Fruit is equivalent to characteristics of God. God's character. Love. God is love. You cannot be filled with the Holy Ghost and filled with all the fullness of God, the Godhead bodily, hating your brothers and sisters in Christ. You cannot. That is diametrically opposed to the truth. God does not contradict himself, y'all. Mercy. Forgiveness. Very strong keys. Very necessary. Holiness. Righteousness. A hunger and thirst for holiness. Kindness. Goodness. I mean, anything that is good, baby, it all comes from the fruits of the Holy Ghost. Now, listen to this. What God showed me is one of the reasons some of us have a hard time experiencing it. One of the reasons, not the reason. One of the reasons is because we're too far away. And how are we too far away? Listen, this is what God showed me. When you want to hear from God, you want to experience God. They say in the world, it's an, it's an expression, it's kind of like a parable or, or um, an adage or whatever. But I'm going to put it in my words. You can't look for different results by doing the same old, same old. You do the same old, same old, you're not going to see different results. New things won't spring out of old. That's why we have to constantly be new wineskins for the new wine to pour into us. Or else it is diametrically opposed. You have to want the new. You have to want to be renewed day by day, minute by minute. You want to want, you have to have a desire to grow in the Lord, to know the Lord more. Now, let me share this with you. God says that he will manifest himself to you when you earnestly seek him with all your heart. That's paraphrased. But let me tell this to you. Some of you seek him by as if he is a vending machine. I'm trying to give you some keys. There are some of you who really, really, really want to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. You got to know him in both. Because in the fellowship of his suffering, that knowing him equips you and buff buffers your ability. It, it, it softens your ability or strengthens, let's say, your ability to go through life's vicissitudes, challenges, trials, whatever you want to call them. And f f knowing him in the fellowship of his suffering is what gets you to understand his heart of compassion. That when we hurt, he hurts. When we cry, he cries. His heart is one with your heart. He knows what you're going through. You're never alone. Remember that. That's why the, 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 the definition of the Holy Spirit, one of the definitions, is paraclete. And that means the one that comes alongside. He's by your side at all times. 24-7. You are never alone. He promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, getting back to the Holy Spirit. You want to get to know God. God is not there to empty his pockets and just bless, 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 bless. This life was not meant to be an amusement park. Heaven, hello. But on earth, this is where we go through our boot camp and get all we can so we can enjoy the most out of heaven when we get there. And we want to be able to get there. So listen. This is kind of like the sifting process. Life is our sifter. Separates the wheat from the chaff. Now listen. This is the, the, this is the 
illustration God gave me. Imagine that you are halfway down the street. You're outside of my house. You're halfway down the road. And you're trying to call my name. And I hear something, so I go outside to hear what's going on. You're hollering, Pat, meet me at Denny's. I want to talk to you. Do you have a couple of hours to spare? Blah, 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 blah. I need some counsel. Now, I'm way over here. You're way down there. So I'm like, uh, yeah, I think so. Can we meet about four? You're down the other end say, what? Can we meet about four? I can't hear you. What did you say? Now listen, why can't you hear me? There's too much distance between us. There's too much air moving between us. There are too many outside peripheral sounds going on. Horns, dogs barking, birds tweeting, crows crowing, all kind of stuff going on. And it really muffles what I'm trying to say to you. Well, that's the same way in the spirit. Some of you have a difficult time reaching out to God because what you're doing is instead of coming to my door where you can be close to me and we can talk face to face, you don't feel like coming that close because you don't feel like walking. You hear me? I'm getting this hot off the press. I didn't even think about this earlier. You're coming down the street. But you don't want to come too far because you don't feel like walking. Your legs are tired. Your feet hurt. So you want to just go back and lay down in the bed and watch TV. So you figure just hollering down the block should get it done. But now you have a hard time hearing what I'm trying to say. And you won't come. You won't put forth the effort to walk down the street to come to my door. If I see you coming, I'm going to meet you halfway. Imagine how much more God meets us when he sees us coming. One of the problems with a lot of the body of Christ, there is no fear of God and there is no hunger. No hunger. These people were in the upper room waiting. How many days did they meet in the upper room waiting and waiting and waiting and nothing happened and waiting and nothing happened and waiting and nothing happened the same old, same old, same old, same old, same old, same old. And one day, like a mighty rushing wind, all of a sudden God shows up. Oh my goodness, look at this. The problem is we don't want to wait on God. We don't want to go through the effort to press in. We don't have the time. We got too many fires on the, on the oven. We got too many things going. Too many fires to put out. Too many issues to handle in this life. And it drowns out the voice of God. It drowns out your spirit picking him up saying, Come, commune with me. Come aside. Set apart yourself from the cares of this world and come spend time with me. Come away with me. No, we don't hear that because we're half a block down the road. See, pressing into God takes work. It takes work, y'all. Yes, I go through my lazy times too. I've experienced him. So I find myself being lazy because I know he is. I know he loves me. I know if I want to press in, I can experience him because I have. But when you have never experienced him, you've got to ask God for the things you don't have that would help you. See, God stacks the deck in our favor. What we cannot do, we ask him to enable us. The Holy Spirit enables us to do the impossible. It's not in there. He'll put it there. You don't have any more gas. He'll fill your tank. So what you need to do is say, okay, Lord, here's the truth. I don't have a real hunger for you. 
like she's talking about. That old broad with that hat on her head. I don't have that kind of hunger. I don't even know what that feels like. But I'm asking you to give me the hunger I don't have. Set a fire inside of me that makes me long for your presence, long for your love. Put a fire in me that makes me want to see your face. When you hunger like that, that's when God begins to show up. Why? Because you're sitting there, you're rocking. God, please come. Come be with me. I need company. I'm lonely. Lord, be my friend. You're not saying, Lord, I need a car. I need gas. I need shoes. I need a light. I need a dress. I need a pair of earrings. I need a wallet. <clears throat> I need a baseball bat. I need a new football. I need this. I need that. Lord, get me a wife. Lord, get me kids. Lord, get me a job. Lord, get me this. We treat him like a vending machine. But we focus on his pockets. We focus on his hands. But we don't focus on him. What we miss out on in life because we don't get to know him. He wants us to know him. Sometimes he plays hide and seek. He'll pull back a little bit, just like they do with the little kids on the Easter egg hunt. They hide the eggs, but they want the kids to find them. So they get a, a kick out of watching the kids hunt and peck for the eggs. Some of y'all will hunt and peck for your lover. You'll hunt and peck for a man, for a woman, for money, for prestige, for a job, for position. But you will not hunt and peck and scratch and dig for God. And that's where we miss out. All right. Now that I have tongue lashed you on that part, let's move along and let's go to Acts, Acts chapter 16. Oh no, I'm not gonna read all that. I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna do that to you. Um <laughs> even though that's where the strongest anointing is in God's word. But we know people and their attention spans. I can look at my YouTube videos and tell that most people don't watch them no more than five minutes in and they're gone. They're in the wind. That's not a hunger for God. Sorry. It's not a hunger. I used to watch videos. I still do. If I hear a good one that, that lights up my spirit, I'll play it and go back to the beginning and play it again and see what I missed the first time. Because I don't want to miss anything. But YouTubers, no. Five minutes, they're done. They got to go watch their movie. They got two hours to watch a movie, but they don't have 20, 30 minutes to listen to God's word. That is sad, y'all. Talk about a great falling away. Talk about lukewarmness. Huh. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let me read this. Start in verse 1. Then came he the, to Derby and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed. But his father was a Greek and was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. He, <clears throat> him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them to the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Yeah, that ain't the case now. Okay, now when they had gone through Phrygia in the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Let me stop there for a second. When was the last time the Holy Ghost told you don't go there? When was the last time you heard him? When was the last time you felt the unction of the Holy Ghost leading you here and telling you, no, don't go there? Huh. After they were come to, My to Mysia, they are said to go on to Bith Bithynia. 
But the Spirit suffered them not. The Spirit did not allow them. They were heading to Bithynia and Spirit didn't allow them to go there either. And they, passing by Mysia, came down to Troos, Troas. And a vision, check this out, here's a supernatural uh, encounter. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over unto Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. When was the last time you felt the Holy Ghost leading you to do anything? Calling you to do this. Calling you to do that. Calling you to take Sister Appleseed, the little 90-year-old, and buy her groceries. When was the last time you felt the Holy Ghost telling you to help that old man and, and take him to, to Braille Institute so he could get a new cane because his cane is broken and he doesn't have a way to get there? And buy the cane for him. Hmm. When was the last time the Holy Ghost told you to go down the street and witness to somebody? Or see somebody in the parking lot and the Holy Ghost says, go to them now. They need me. Minister me to them. No, because we're too busy. We're hustling. We're bustling. We're running. We're, 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 we're running here. We're running there. We're going to the store. We're going to the bank. We're running errands. We got things to do. People to see. Places to go. But no time for God, because we're busy. There's a song that says, I miss my time with you. These moments together, I need to be with you each day. But it hurts me when you say, you're too busy. Too busy trying to serve me. But how can you serve me when your spirit's empty? There's a longing in my heart, wanting more than just a part of you. It's true. I miss my time with you. Spending time with God is always a deposit into your spirit. Reading his word is a deposit into your spirit. Reading his word is eating three meals a day and getting your nourishment. But this is in the spirit realm. It, it draws you closer to God and you begin to hear him, feel him, be led by him more strongly. But no, we want to be with God from down the street. We want to be God's neighbor. We don't want to live in the house with God. And we wonder why there is no power. We wonder why there is so little faith and so little authority. When we battle demons, why are we more afraid of a demon than we are of God? Why? Because we have no clue who God really is. We have not taken the time to really get to know him. You get to know God. The first thing you get to know about God is through his word. You read his word. Spend an hour or two just sitting there reading. If you can spend 30 minutes reading a book, you can spend 30 minutes reading his word. Whole lot more life in his word than there is in a nice little novel. How many of you born again Christians on YouTube? Or reading novels back to back, taking all kind of classes. But you have yet to sit at Jesus' feet and allow God to teach you out of his word, out of his mouth, out of the Bible. See, that's why I knew this was going to be a longer message than I wanted it to be. Because I wasn't quite sure which direction God was going to take it. So I'm just kind of going the way I feel led. But one of the biggest problems with us, see, we want the power, but we don't want the cost. Am I right? We will spend two or three hours on the phone 
talking to somebody about nothing. Nothing that's going to get us to heaven. Nothing that's going to make real changes in our lives. But we like their voice. We like those boobs. We like those legs, those broad shoulders on that man. We like that manly demeanor. He turns me on. Yeah, let me talk to him. And we got time for that. We make time. But when it comes to God, for some reason, we have to squeeze him in. There are times, I'm going to be honest with you. Now, you're going to look at me like I'm crazy. But see, I know God knows me better than I know myself. So there's no need in pulling punches and, 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 and patty cake and what I feel. I tell it like it is. Because I know he knew it before I even I even became aware of it. And I ask him to forgive me because, honestly, I don't feel like reading the word right now. So, Lord, I'm asking you, l- listen. Give me the desire to read it in Jesus' name. Give me the desire, Lord. Help me because I'm, I'm a little too full of my flesh right now. I'm in a real lazy mode right now, and I don't want to slide into the neighborhood of lukewarm. I don't want to deal with that. So set me on fire. Now, We want the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Yes, we do. We must live with the gifts of the Holy Ghost. It makes life a lot easier because people are warned by the gifts. People are instructed through the gifts. People are enlightened with the gift. People are edified, built up, strengthened, encouraged with the gift. People are corrected and rebuked with the gifts of the Holy Ghost. But baby, you can't have the gift without having the giver. You got to have it all. They all come hand in hand. You can't have me without my big mouth. It comes with the package. You can't have me without my hands. Comes with the package. You can't have God without the Son, without the Holy Spirit. You can't say, I want this, but I don't want that. God is not a buffet menu. You can't pick and choose what you like and spit out what you don't like because it doesn't line up with you. No, that's not the way this goes. That's the way the world runs. That's not the way we go. That's not the way it goes with God. Whatever comes with God, you want it all because it's all God. God is God. Jesus is God the Son. The Holy Spirit is God the Spirit. It's all God, y'all. What I ask you to do, this may have to go into next week. What I ask you to do, is ask God daily to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Ask God daily to forgive you, morning, noon, and night. Keep your slate clean all day long. Lord, forgive me for sin before you say anything. It's just like when you pick up the phone in order to talk to me or Jeanette or Lynn or Rashad or Key or anybody, in order to talk to Peter or whoever, you got to dial certain numbers in order to make the connection. First, you got to pick up the phone. Then you got to dial the number. Well, in order to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you got to pick up the phone and connect with God. Mm -hmm. In order to hear his voice, you got to put that earpiece up to your ear. It can't be laying on the table and you expect to hear what folks are saying to you. No, you want to hear God, you got to pick up. Pick up that Bible, bring it close to your bosom and soak it in. Read, baby, read. You may not like to read. There are plenty of places on YouTube where you can or on the internet, Google 
the, the King James Bible online. Google whatever version you like. And sit there and and click the uh, listen button and let the person read it into your spirit. But don't sit there and neglect because you're too lazy. All of us have areas of laziness. I'd be lying if I said I was never lazy. That's one of my biggest problems. I confess it. But I don't just live there and say, oh, well, (laughs) it's just me. I'm just lazy. Oh, well. No, because I wanted to get to know God personally. There's no way I could have stayed. I could have stayed saved. There is no one saved, always saved. Now, when the Bible talks about a great falling away, how can you fall away if you never were there? That means you had to have been there in order to fall away from it. Okay, I'm going to stop, but I'm going to ask God. To fill each and every one of you who are listening now and who will listen to this upload on YouTube. To fill you and baptize you with this Holy Ghost. First, accept Jesus into your heart. You can't have one without the other. You got to have Jesus in your heart. He must be your Lord and Savior. And I'm going to tell you this. A lot of people say you must believe that he died on the cross, that he rose from the dead, and you must believe that he died for your sins and da 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 da. Well, let me tell you, some of you may not have a strong belief in that area. You're looking at one. I did not. I gave my heart to the Lord on a whim, hoping it was true. I was not convinced. God took my little mustard seed of faith and blessed it because I made the first step. He drew me and I accepted the invitation. Some of y'all need to accept the invitation before you start getting convinced because faith comes by hearing. You can't tell the Lord, oh Lord, I love you. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Oh, I'll do it. No, you don't know him. How are you going to love him? So what you do is you get to know him by reading the word. After you accept Jesus in your heart, you read that word. You talk to him. You pour your heart out to him. Ask him for inner healing. Ask him for deliverance. Ask him to show you who he is in scripture. Hook up with other believers. All right. I'm not going to go into all this beginning stuff, but I just want to share that with you. Cannot walk this walk without the power of the Holy Ghost working in you. And that's what some of your problems are. Some of you have never been filled with the Holy Ghost. You just said the little quick words like a good luck charm, hoping that it gives you a a, a get out of hell free pass. (sighs) Okay. Father, I ask you, Lord, for those who have not accepted you, For those who aren't really sure who you are and what you stand for, but they want to get to know you. Lord, your word says that Jesus is the door. He's the way to God. And I'm asking you, Father, for those people who aren't sure what they're accepting, but they want to know, I ask you to give them enough of that mustard seed faith to ask you for forgiveness And to openly say, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I ask you, Lord, to reveal yourself to them daily. So it will strengthen their faith and give them a hunger to want to read your word and fill them with your Holy Spirit. Forgive them. Fill them. Give them a hunger. Give them power. Change their nature in Jesus' name. Deliver them. Give them inner healing, freedom in Jesus' name. Give them a supernatural understanding of your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And I pray, Father, for those who are believers, who have been walking with the Lord or just started walking, or have a problem with the power, feel like they're too weak, I ask you to fill them afresh right now. Come in with a mighty rushing wind and fill them with your Holy Ghost, with all the gifts of your Holy Spirit manifesting in their life, dreams, visions, 
prophecy, speaking the word with boldness, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, all the powers of the Holy Ghost working in them, fruits of righteousness, of love, of unity, of peace, faith, strength, mercy, everything working in them, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, fill everyone in God's church of love. Baptize us in your Holy Ghost. Now, come Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name I pray. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I thank you for the plans you have for us, in Jesus' name. And help us to learn more about how your Holy Spirit works in our lives, how the supernatural works in us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. When you read the book of Acts, it opens your eyes to all that the Holy Ghost can do, to all that you can do in the Holy Ghost. But you got to read it to see it. You got to see it to hunger for it. You got to hunger for it to get it. And I'm going to stop there. God bless you. We will continue this unless God says something different next week. God bless you in Jesus' name. And I ask that you pray every day that the Holy Ghost come on you, that God manifests himself to you, that you know the love of God like you've never known any other love before. Pursue God's love. Go after God's love with a vengeance. Until you get it, till you experience it, till you know it, beyond a shadow of a doubt. God bless you. Amen. Now let me turn on these mics. Give me a second.